little brat to die. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I got this Sarah Sanderson makeup look. She is my favorite from the Hocus Pocus movie. So of course, since Halloween is a few days away, I wanted to do a Sarah makeup look for you guys. I watch this movie every single year and it just never gets old. It's, it's just a must. Every Halloween, it's a must. So yeah, if you're recreating this look or you're just a fan of Hocus Pocus and you just want to put something on as background noise or be entertained by this video, I hope that you enjoy it and I hope that you also subscribe down below and click on the notification bell that way you get notified when I upload new videos. So yeah, grab a snack, grab your coffee, tea, popcorn, whatever it is may be and I will show you how I got this look. Just keep watching. Okay, so I'm just gonna address the elephant in the room. I fully am aware that I'm giving off Lucius Malfoy vibes and no, I'm not really God, loving please, it, no. but we're just gonna, we're just gonna move on and get into this tutorial. First, I am going to prime my skin and I'm using the Laura Mercier Perfecting Canvas Primer. And I'm not gonna worry about pinning down the sides of the wig right now so much. I can always do that at the end. I wanna be able to really get in there and blend my makeup without that in my way. Next, I'm going in with foundation and I'm going to be using the Makeup Forever HD foundation stick. And this is in the shade Y245. This is the Sigma Flat Kabuki F80 brush and a little bit of oil. This is the Derma E Radiant Glow Face Oil. And this is nice, it has jojoba, argan, and sea buckthorn oils. And this just makes my foundation glide on much more smoothly. And I do about three drops of this. I kind of stipple very um, closely, if that makes sense, when I'm in the center of the face and then I kind of buff out a lot more as I get towards the outer parts of my face, just so there's more coverage in the middle. And make sure to blend that down your neck so that it's even and your neck matches your face. From the picture, her foundation does look a little more on the matte side. The Makeup Forever HD foundation stick tends to be a bit more dewy. I am actually going to go in with powder just to mattify everything afterwards, but this is the lightest foundation that I currently have at the moment, and that is why I went in with the HD stick. But if you have a um, matte foundation of your preference, then feel free to use that if you're recreating this look. For concealer, I am going in with the NARS Chantilly Light Concealer. I'm using my Sigma Concealer F75 brush to apply it, and then I'm going to blend it out with my beauty sponge. And on the bridge of my nose, I'm actually going to make my nose look bigger than usual because I want to kind of make my nose look a little more like hers. So she has a much larger nose than I do. And one way to make your nose look bigger is to make the bridge of your nose highlighted even more. I'm adding a little extra concealer because 
I'm really sleep deprived and tired. I haven't been getting a lot of rest this week and I'm pretty sure she slept for like 300 years or something, so. My girl is a lot more rested than I am. <laughs> now I'm going in with the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish and this is in the shade one. This is her Micro Perfecting Powder and it really sets the makeup beautifully without looking too cakey and that's why I really love this powder. And I'm doing this with my e.l.f. blush brush. And I'm just gonna set a lot of my face so I can mattify my look a little bit more because again, like I said, she's pretty matte. Now I am going to contour using my Hoola Benefit bronzer. I'm using my MAC 163 brush for this. It's just like a nice angled fluffy brush. And this is gonna be a little tricky with a wig on. Just add a little color back into the face because I don't want to seem too flat, especially with a matte foundation and not much bronzer, so. I'm going to contour my nose, but I'm going to try to make it a little bit bigger than it normally would look. So I'm going to make this area look a little more round. And by doing that, I am going to kind of make a circle with my contour shade. I'm going to do kind of a wide contour. And the brush I'm using is the Pro Blending large 27 brush i got this at sephora i think i'm gonna go with the anastasia ebony brow powder and i'm just gonna fill my brows in with this and it's okay if it's not super neat her brows are quite messy actually and i think a powder is honestly the best way to kind of mimic that real fluffy messy brow look that she has going on and then it's like a super arch and then it gets really thin right here. So maybe I can actually conceal this area to thin out the edge of my eyebrow. And then it just kind of goes down. So I'm actually going to try to arch it down. And then I'm going to fill them in. They really are quite dark from start to finish, so I'm going to try to duplicate that. I am going to use a spoolie to blend that out. And then taking a concealer brush and some of that NARS concealer again, I am going to carve out my brows in order to kind of lift them a bit and cover up some of the brow hairs to look a little more like the shape of her brows. Not so much to give them that clean Insta brow look, it's just to kind of manipulate my brow hairs and make them look more like hers. So now I'm taking my soap brows and a spoolie and I'm using the watermelon mist that comes with the soap brows. You can also use um, MAC Fix Plus Spray and then I am going to go into the soap brow. I want a lot on my brush because I really need to make these brow hairs stick up. We want all the messy hairs because that is how her brows are. Okay, so I have my super bushy, wispy brows on. Um, I actually, after I did the brows, I went in with the Anastasia brow pen 
and I just kind of flicked out a little more um, just to accentuate those like messy brow hairs because her brow hairs were just so bushy and messy and all over the place and I wanted to really recreate that. Now I'm going in with the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot and I'm using this to prep my eyes and I'm applying this with a Real Techniques brush. And the good thing about this look is it's quite messy so you don't have to worry too much about perfecting anything if you don't want to. Next, I'm taking this Laura Mercier eye color stick and this is in the shade Tuxedo. Any kind of like black cream stick you have will work. She had kind of a rich, dark, smoky eye. And this is just going to really act as a base for the black shadow. And I'm just using a synthetic brush. This is a Sigma F75 brush, but any synthetic flat brush will work for this part. And you just wanna buff out that black cream stick. I am going to use the KKW Beauty Matte Smoke Palette for this look. And this is basically just a bunch of matte, smoky eye kind of colors that are cool toned because that is basically the eye look that she had in the movie. And before going in with any dark colors, I like to kind of lay down a light base in my crease and that just kind of makes the blending look a little bit better later on. So I am going to go in with this shade right here and this is Stucco. And it's just a nice, soft, kind of really, really light brown, almost a skin tone shade. I'm going to take this shade right here. This is Umber, and it kind of looks similar to the shade that she has on her lid. It's not like jet, jet black. And I'm going to start by using a Sigma Large Fluff E50 brush for this. And she has that color kind of in her crease as well. So I'm going to take another brush. This is the, oh, this one doesn't have a name, but any kind of dome shaped large fluffy brush. This is from Morphe. Unfortunately, there's no number on it, so that probably means it came with a collection that I bought, but um, a lot of brushes are very similar to this one. I'm going to blend that color that I just went in with into my crease as well. I'm not gonna do it too, too high. I'm still keeping it a little bit lower. And I'm going to wing it outward just a bit. Then on a smaller brush for my lid, I am using the Sigma Eye Shading E55 brush, and I'm going in with the black shade Onyx and applying that towards the center of my lid closest to my lash line, just to kind of add some dimension and really deepen up that area. And it kind of winged outwards, so I'm just gonna create that kind of triangle shape. And using my Morphe blending brush, I'm going to soften the crease up a little bit more. 
so my camera died but i'm just gonna go over um what i just did so i used a luxie 246 brush and this shade right here porcelain to highlight my brow bone and then i took a sigma flat definer e15 brush and the black shade onyx and lined underneath my eye and then on a morphe times jaclyn hill jh40 brush i used this shade right here clay as well as some of graphite and blended that out underneath my eye now i'm going back in with that flat definer brush from sigma and more of the black shade in the palette and i'm just going to redefine some of the black liner that I created using the flat definer brush because when I smoked it out it dulled it down a bit and I want it to be very dark. Now taking my Marc Jacobs highlighter in the shade blacker I'm going to fill in my lower lash line. Now on a Morphe M527 brush, I am taking my butter bronzer and I'm just going to apply just a little bit to my cheeks, not too much. And with a Sigma winged liner E06 brush, I am going to take my Maybelline gel liner in black and line just along my lash line just to give it even more definition and you can already see how that just intensified the black even more which is exactly what I wanted so now I am going in with blush and this is more of a very natural blush it's by Laura Mercier it's called fresco so I'm using the Morphe E4 brush for this. For lashes, I am going in with the Ardell Wispies because I wanna add a little bit of something more dramatic to the look. However, it didn't look like Sarah had any lashes on in the movie. It just looked like she had on um, mascara. So you could totally curl your lashes and add mascara. I will be doing that, but I will also apply the Ardell Wispies afterwards for a more dramatic look. And the mascara I'm using is the Benefit Roller Lash. Also, the glue that I'm using is by Lily Lashes. And I really love this lash glue. It just makes your lashes stay on really, really well. Always make sure to let the glue get a little bit tacky first before applying your lashes, because if not, it'll be a sloppy mess and Trust me, it'll just save you so much time in the end. So I just applied some blue contacts off camera. These are the blue ice contacts from the Hydrocore line of Solotica. And now I'm going in with my MAC Extended Play Mascara for my lower lashes. Now I'm taking MAC Burgundy Lip Pencil and I'm just gonna line my lips. She kind of had a more defined Cupid's bow, so I'm just going to kind of accentuate that the same way hers looked. And I definitely am not going to do any overlining because her lips were much smaller than mine. So I want to keep the lips on the smaller side. For the lips, I'm going in with Anastasia Seraphine Liquid Lipstick.
for her infamous mole, I am using the Anastasia Dark Brown Dip Brow Pomade. And I'm using a Sigma Eyeliner EO5 brush for this. It's just got a nice pointed tip so I can get a cute little mole. And because we want our makeup to last, I'm going in with the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. This is my all-time favorite setting spray for when you really wanna keep your makeup on for really, really long hours. And that is the completed look. I also added some braids right here because I noticed that in some of the scenes she had little braids. Also, I noticed that in the beginning of the movie, before the witches were hung, she had very curly hair and after they came back, her hair was straighter. So this is more of like a representation, at least as close as it's gonna get for now, <laughs> of her hair after she came back. If you have a platinum wig though, that will probably work better than white, but I'm just gonna make this work. And that is the completed Sarah Sanderson makeup tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. That way I know you liked it and I can keep creating content like this for you guys. I know I had so much fun creating this look. Sarah Sanderson has always been my favorite of the Sanderson sisters. Let me know in the comments down below who your favorite Sanderson sister is, as well as what you guys are doing for this Halloween, even if it's just sitting on your couch, watching Netflix and eating candy and popcorn. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I will see you guys in my next tutorial. I'll put a spell on you.